This week on Angelo's Workbench, we're shooting the clear coat on the 71, and we're painting a bunch of parts. I hope you'll stick around. <laughs> So, I'm getting ready to shoot the clear on the Mustang, and I just wanted to show you guys. I uh, cleaned the airbrush because I had shot metallic silver. Um, I didn't really need to clean the airbrush. It was still shooting clear, but all of that metal flake that you see spinning around in that thinner would have been in my clear coat as I applied it to the body. So I cleaned my airbrush. I also took the opportunity to clean the spray booth so that we can get a nice, clean, clear. This is a non-metallic color. And you can see that when I had shot the clear on this spoon, I hadn't cleaned the airbrush. And you can see the metal flake in it. So my airbrush wasn't clean. There was some silver in the airbrush. And it came through in the clear coat. And then you end up with a little bit of a metal flake, which is normally not a big deal. If you are painting a metal flake car, like this Corvette here, when I painted this one, that has metal flake in it. So I didn't have to really worry about uh, having a metallic in the clear. But when you're doing a solid color like this Grabber Blue, you got to clean your airbrush, clean your paint booth, make sure everything is nice and clean before you shoot that clear. Let's go to the booth. And it's time for us to mix up the clear coat. My uh, cheapo clear coat that I got off of Amazon, like, I don't know, five, six years ago. I'm still using the same stuff. So we're going to mix up uh, one and a half batches. So it's um, four parts this to one and a half parts this. I've already turned on the spray booth because it stinks. I've got two brand new pipettes ready to go. So I want one and a half of these, the activator. You just gotta kinda eyeball the half. That's about right. And then put that pipette aside because we cannot mix the two pipettes together because if you dump a bunch of activator in here off of the pipette, guess what? Then the clear coat goes off. The curing process begins and then uh, you've ruined your clear coat. And I've managed to, I mean, this thing is still <laughs> probably up to here. Um, uh, I've had this for five, six years. We're doing model cars nonstop, and uh, I'm still uh, still able to use it. So, so now I need six of these. One, two, three, four, five. And that's usually enough uh, for me to do an entire model car. Um, I've never, I don't think I've ever had to mix up more. I mean, unless I've had a problem with the paint job and ended up having to uh, start again. And I usually drop just a little bit of lacquer thinner in there. There we go. Get this out of here. And like I said, I like to drop a little bit of lacquer thinner in there just to thin it out a little bit. Because it's just a little bit too thick. Not, not too, too thick, but it's just a little bit too thick for the airbrush. So a little bit of lacquer thinner just gives it a nice little touch. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. And if you have it thinned out, you don't get those strings and everything that uh, shoot out of it when the uh, clear coat is too thick. So now I'm going to just mix this together a little bit. And I like to use the pipette to pull the clear coat out and then shoot it back in. It mixes it from the bottom really nicely, just like that. And then Murphy's Law of Clear Coat, any dried clumps of clear or any particles that were in the pipette or for whatever reason were in the cup or dust particles or something, whatever is in the clear coat, no matter how you are shooting your model car, will land right smack dab in the middle of the roof or the middle of the hood. So, what I do is I just run it through a quick strain 
I buy these, I buy these body shop uh, paint filters or paint strainers. And they're massively huge. So I just cut them down to hobby size with a little pair of scissors. And I get these in bulk off of Amazon too. And uh, I don't know, they're, they're not very expensive. And then the same thing goes for these little plastic cups. I get these in bulk off of Amazon. So now we're gonna take our strainer and we're gonna take this and we're just gonna put the clear coat through it. There you go. Clear coat has been strained and uh, hopefully removed any solid particles, pieces of junk, garbage, or whatever that are chilling in there. And then this is a freshly brand new cleaned airbrush. I just disassembled it fully because I had shot some silver, some metallic silver. And um, because I had shot metallic silver, there were silver particles in the airbrush and that would get into your clear coat. And then all of a sudden you've got a metal flake and grabber blue is not a metal flake. So, so now my airbrush is locked loaded, ready to shoot. I'm gonna get my respirator on and my gloves for this because this is 2K clear coat. This stuff is no good. And, uh, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I am now ready to go. I'm gonna do the hood first. There we go. I just want just a light coat to start out with. Nothing too terribly crazy. We are going over details, so we'll just let that cure. And I have a leak. My airbrush needle wasn't fully seated. Now it is. There we go. Yep, perfect. Okay, so got these silver parts. I like to blow just a little bit of air over it first. Get rid of any potential particles on there. That looks good to me. And the last of the silver parts, the spoiler here. Put some air over it. I have all these lights in here so that I can see my wet edge. Follow my wet edge and see how uh, how wet the clear coat is, how much is on there. spraying a clear material, you need to uh, be careful. I just want to take a look and see how this is doing on the decal. That's doing perfect. This stuff cures really quick. It's too big. That's probably almost ready for another coat already, but I give it a full 10 minutes. I see a lot of dust on this car. first.
never fear, but where is here? There we go. Never fails. Big blob, right in the middle of the roof. Never fails. There it is, the blob. That's all right, I'll get it after. That's what sandpaper and polishing compound is for. I've ever mentioned this on the video or not, but one of the things that I do in my workbench is I maintain temperature and humidity and I monitor it. So right now that is over by the workbench. And it's interesting because you actually do have variations in a room. This is by the spray booth. It's a little bit warmer and a little bit drier because there is a hot water radiator next to where my spray booth is and I've positioned my spray booth near that on purpose so I can get a couple of extra degrees and a little bit drier air. Um, and, and that being in the northeastern United States, it is presently winter here. And then this is over on the building bench. So I maintain, and I, yeah, I keep it pretty warm in here. I don't have a lot of uh, body fat, so I get cold very easily. So yeah, I rock it in the, I rock it in the 70s, the mid to upper 70s in my workbench to keep myself comfortable. But um, also, uh, it helps me maintain good humidity uh, so that my paint will cure and I don't end up with stuff that has a hard time curing or takes a long time to cure. So if you're having problems and you're getting moisture in your paint, sometimes it can be you're painting into a humid environment. And there's all kinds of articles online written by people who know way more than me on this topic about temperature and humidity. But I, I do monitor the temperature and the humidity and try to keep it within a certain range. And I don't have trouble with my paint job. So what works for me works for me. Everybody's different. Every airbrush is different. Every technique is different. So do what works for you. But, uh, but keep an eye on your temperature and humidity, especially if you're having some problems. So let's get back to the painting. All right, we're gonna go in with coat number two on the body. One will be slightly wetter. So I will pull back on the trigger a little more than I did on the first coat and move a little slower. Cheap clear coat, it really is quite good. I don't think that might not need a third coat. I think two coats got it done. I try not to go too crazy. The 2K builds up quite quickly and gets quite thick. So I try not to go too crazy with the clear coat. But that's looking pretty, pretty good right there. I'll take that. That's not bad. So we'll set that aside. Go in for a second coat on the hood. There we go. We'll be happy. I'm back here. And I'll go ahead and uh, second coat um, all the little parts. You guys don't need to stick around for that. And uh, I'll meet you back over at the bench for what's next. So I'm pretty much all set for shooting the clear coat, and you can see of how much I mixed up. That's pretty much what's left, and it varies. Sometimes I, if I have to do a third coat, I would use the rest of that. But uh, you know, my uh, mixing up one of these uh, is typically enough for a model car. So onward we go. So the clear coat is uh, done and cured, and 
is looking really good. It came out awesomely. And um, I'm noticing that um, I had some clear coat build up around the outer edges of this thing, the taillight section, and that this is, in fact, uh, chrome with black on the inside. So uh, I'm going to put the black on the inside and then maybe a little Molotow around the outer edge and the centers um, and get that looking the part. That'll be coming up down the road. The hood's looking good, too. Nice and shiny. And uh, fairly uniform on that silver color. Like, I'm okay with that. That's pretty good. And that's the Tamiya XF16 flat aluminum. Um, and I'm going to do the back side of the hood uh, some black. I'm going to get some black on here. Um, so, but what we're going to do now is it's time to do a couple of things. So I'm going to shoot some black parts, right? So I'm going to have a, uh, I think I'm going to have a black interior. So I'm going to need to get on that. And the other thing is, when you put this interior tub in, you can see the parts that show through to the bottom. Um, so I need to decide, uh, I'm probably going to uh, shoot that black. I'll have that tunnel be black. And then I'll have a little black overspray on the edges, a little silver overspray, maybe a little blue. I don't know, I gotta look at some reference online. These are definitely gonna be black in here, uh, as well as this engine bay. It's gonna be all black. Um, and then these wheel wells, I'd like them to be black. And then, of course, I'm going to paint the gas tank. So all that's going to come. But for right now, I'm just going to get the, the black going. So so I've got the uh, semi-gloss black parts, which is most of them. And then I've got this. Uh, and then um, the seats are actually a very interesting two-tone. And they have some silver on them. So I'm probably going to do that first. Um, but then everything else that has to be black is in here and ready to go. The flat black stuff I still have separate, uh, and I'll worry about that those later. But um, for right now, I'm ready to start taking out the black parts and getting them ready for paint. So the first thing I will do is I will prime them because the black that I use likes to have a primer under it. So I will give these a shot with some gray primer. So I basically have to take all of the parts out, put them on sticks, or put them on um, clips. So I'll find like a part of it where something goes, like this one has those little nubs. And I'll just stick it on there, and then I can spray it. So that's ready. Shock absorbers too, you know, are excellent. They have little end post nubs where things go, where it has to go into something. And I'll attach on to that. For the parts that can't fit, I put them on a piece of masking tape and uh, and then have them just be flat, like these door panels. I might have to do that with these. Though so these have a nice tab on the bottom I might be able to get away with. But we'll see. If I can, I can. If I can, I can't. I'll put them on a flat piece of masking tape and paint them that way. But I'm going to get all the black parts prepped and ready to go for paint, and then I'll bring you back. Okay, I have the black parts pretty much ready to go. Um, and I have them compiled. And then I was looking at the back side of the hood, and I was thinking that I did this right by mounting it on the center and because I figured that this would all be black. Well, this is actually all blue. So I have to mix up a little bit more grabber blue, and I have to shoot this entire reverse side of this hood blue. And then there is a small piece, and you can make out the detail of it on the back side here. There's a small black plastic piece that goes around the air cleaner and goes from the, the grabber hood into the air cleaner. This part here has to be black, but the center of the circle is blue. And then this area here is blue, and this part is blue. So, And then if you look really closely, there is some, uh, some details here. There's like a line for like a something that went to the hood so I'm going to make that black um, so the plastic piece around this will be blue this will be black and so on but this entire reverse side of this hood needs to be blue so I gotta mix up a little bit of grabber blue and I gotta grabber blue this hood because while I'm spraying all the other parts black I want to spray this hood black too so let's prep it let's get this grabber blue and then we'll go from there fresh out of the spray booth one blue reverse side of the hood you can see a little easier now the section that has to be black just this little half circle here 
there's a black plastic piece apparently that the air cleaner would hook onto and you can see the impression of the air cleaner in that that actually stays metallic blue and i'll do some more closer uh photo reference before i paint that and then you can see quite clearly now that little line that goes all the way and runs to the back of the hood i'll be painting that black so we can have a little really cool little underhood detail on this mustang and uh, and i managed to keep the other side without any blue on it so that was a good thing so well uh, so now these parts are all ready to get primed uh, and then we will go to the spray booth and uh, we will prime them and we will paint them black and then I will bring you back. So my reference photos, reference photos have this thing around here black, but then the rest of the hood, including right here, all blue metal. So what I need to do is <clears throat> I need a circle. So I have a little circle cutter here and I'm just kind of measuring what I think from the center of that is and i want to do the center portion of it blue not the outer side so i think i need and i'm just kind of eyeballing from the center to the edge i think right about there will do it and then we can just do a little test and i can cut a circle out of masking tape and there it is and I get my tweezers in here and now let's see how we did wow I'll take that that looks good to me so uh so that takes care of the circle got just a little bit of tape there there we go. Um, so now there's a basically, <clears throat> it's basically a square with the exception of that one section. So I'm just kind of trying to eyeball this. There we go. And the way this is working out is actually pretty good because it's gonna cover the vent holes. So I don't have to worry about black paint coming out those vent holes because the hood's molded open, which is really cool. I'm glad it's molded open, but you got to be careful that you don't get paint spraying through. And there's a black piece that goes around the outer edge of the plastic. And then I was thinking to be ultra fancy instead of... Instead of just painting this wire, I might actually find a very small piece of wire and just run it along the hood. But the only part that's going to have to be painted is this one little section here. So maybe, maybe I won't. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. Um, so now what we have to do is this is an angle here. So I'm going to put the tape like this. And I'm going to use my fingernail to kind of burnish it down so I can see where I need to run my knife along. This always makes me nervous because, you know, you're taking a, a knife blade near your, near your paint job. And, uh, and that's never, um, <laughs> that's never ideal. And one stray, one stray blade strike and, you know, you've, uh, created a, uh, issue. So this is where I have to go. There we go. That should work. I'll leave that down. I gotta remember to take the correct piece off. I'm forever doing that. Happens to everybody. You take the wrong piece off take this off but that's the part you want to cover don't take don't take don't take this piece off <laughs> you got to take this piece off so there we go i almost did it i came close oop got a little got a little
part here where I didn't cut all the way through. There we go. Ah, now we got it. Well, that looks pretty good. And that's the part that needs to be black right there. Excellent. So now we can, oh, and then there's that little section right there. Little tiny piece. That is blue, according to my reference photos. But this is easy enough. It's very clear, very easy to see. The molding, the molded in detail on the bottom of this hood is, uh, is fantastic. They did a very nice job on this hood. Perfect. Awesome. So now I've got that little section masked as well. So now this is ready to get uh, this is ready to get painted black. And oh, I'm gonna end up with black on that little tip if I don't put some tape on it. If I could get the tape to stop sticking to my fingers, that would be ideal. And I've got this scrap piece of tape here, and I can put it to good use right there. There. So now that's ready for a nice coat of black. And then uh, when I peel the mask off, I'll have that, <clears throat> that black plastic uh, air intake that attaches to the top of the air cleaner. Um, I'll have that duplicated pretty well. And then I can do the little line that controls the air vents. And, uh, and that would be that. The bottom of the hood will look fantastic. So let's go to the booth. So I'll get, uh, I'll get these parts first because they've got to go in the dehydrator. So I'll just give them a little coat of black from all three, oh, excuse me, all four directions, all 363. I know I probably don't have to paint the back of that front grill, but I just can't. Anyway. good part coverage paint all four sides and you have a nice fully painted part yeah. and now these can go chill in the hydrator while we paint the other parts Cures pretty quickly. This is a water-based paint. It's a black that I mix up with. Uh, let's see here, Createx opaque black, and then the Vallejo 71.161 thinner. And I just I mix it up by the bottle because I use so much black. I mean, you can go through so much X18. It's not even funny. So I just take the bottle. Again. So now we can do the back side of the hood. Very light coat. Just does not need to be heavy first coat because I got a lot of masking tape on it. So I'm just going light and then I shoot some wind. Right, right now I'm just shooting air. Kind of dries it up. And then I go in with a little more paint. And then I shoot some more air. You don't want to have a really wet coat because capillary action will suck that paint right under the tape. I like this black. So the hood is done. So now the hood can cure over there and we can uh, continue with the rest of the parts. 
one little part of the interior tray that you can see through the chassis. I just want to make sure that I've got it all. Bring the chassis over and just kind of hold it up. And yeah, you can see just that center column is really the only part that needs to be done and the back of the firewall area. So I want to make sure that uh, you don't see any bare white plastic after it's assembled. spray up the rest of these black parts and uh, and then I will join you back at the bench okay so let's see uh, let's see how we did this is most of the way cured actually I think it's all the way cured and there we go there is the, oh, I gotta get the circle out of there. Wait, wait a minute, I'm missing something here. Something don't look right. There we go. Ta-da. So there is the black plastic thing that's under the hood. So that'll look kind of cool when I raise the hood. You'll kind of see that where the, that part of the plastic is supposed to interact with the rubber foam on the air cleaner. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then I just have to inadvertently painted the lines black all the way up to that point. So now I just need to get this little line painted black. And then that will be the reverse side of the hood. So that's looking pretty good. And that's going to wrap up video number three in the Revell 71 Boss 351 Mustang video series. The all new tooling. What a great kit. Go ahead and click that like, comment, share, subscribe. All that stuff helps Angelo's workbench and I greatly appreciate it. Also, don't forget to check me out on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram, all under the name Angelo's Workbench. Thank you for watching. I will see you all next week.